Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our play-by video of Eldritch Horror and Cities in Ruin where we're just about to start turn five. <laughs> and it's Halloween! Right, anyway, hopefully we won't have a horror turn but it is on the cards. But anyway, talking of cards, errors made last turn. Well, there was one. When Bob, well, it was two, but one doesn't matter. The main one was Bob. Now, um, he turned over his own condition in order to look at the two gates here and put a gate on the base of the stack. He couldn't look at his own condition. It does stay other investigators. So, normally what that means is we'd have to bring the gate from underneath, but there was a condition for... Lily Chen we'd have just looked at that and to be honest while he shouldn't have looked at his own and we do know what it is now on the back it's worked out worse for us I'll be very surprised he's got a load of influence dice he's got a load of re-rolls on influence he will probably get rid of that detained condition it would have been better for us if he'd actually used it on the guts condition and we'd have found out what was on the other side of that because in all probability he is going to get rid of that detained condition I hope so anyway because otherwise we're in big trouble the other one that didn't really matter was Ashcan Pete. He should have only actually rolled one die because you build up the dice pool first. So he would have gone to zero and then we'd have added the die. So uh, he should have rolled only one die, but he got two successes. So it doesn't matter. Take either one of them away. He'd have still succeeded. So that is fine. Right. Having gone through that, let's find out what's happened previously on Cities in Ruin. It was a more thoughtful and unusually quiet Bob who headed to New York to catch the liner back to Europe. His glimpse of other worlds and dimensions has left him significantly changed. To talk with ancient peoples from millennia past, whose consciousness now resided in an alien being, it was truly astonishing. As was bumping into old Pete and Duke and finding out that they were the fire stick waving hobo and the devil dog, it seemed a hell of a long time since they had occasionally chewed the fat together at the magazine stand the previous summer, before Pete had hopped on another train and moved on. In New York, Bob checked in at the American Museum of Natural History. He wanted to find out some things, but no sooner had he arrived than there had been a collapse in one of the galleries. Bob was covered in plaster and brick dust and he was suddenly overcome with a sense of dire foreboding. A collapse as soon as he had crossed the threshold? Surely this was no coincidence. Even as he pondered the disaster, he heard cries for help. Bob worked frantically with the museum staff, and eventually they were able to pull a small, frightened, elderly man from under the debris. He had managed to cower under an old oak table, and it had saved his life. The elderly man was a curator of medieval history at the British Museum. He had been chaperoning an on-loan artefact. It was an ancient sword. Bob helped the man out onto the street. The curator joined Bob on the ship, eager to return the sword back to London. Docking at Southampton, Bob and the curator made their way to the capital. They arrived in London after the museum had closed. So while the curator was busy talking to the museum guards to gain access, Bob had waited smoking a cigarette. Pondering his next move, Bob didn't notice the policemen until it was too late. There was a brief scuffle during which the old curator had nodded at Bob and pretended that Bob's briefcase and luggage were actually his. Bob had asked the police what the hell was going on. He demanded to see the American ambassador. The police had taken him away, still protesting. It was only a quarter of an hour or so into the journey that Bob noticed that one of the arresting officers who was holding onto a guardrail in the police wagon. The man had a tattoo on his forearm. A tattoo of a worm with tentacles coming out of its mouth. So here we are with Bob. He's on four health and four sanity. He's got plenty of stuff, but 
he hasn't lost any yet even though he has been detained so he's been detained i've made it that he's been detained by agents of shoed mel rather than the british police <laughs> so here we are and he's got an impairment token unfortunately but he's still got plenty of influence so hopefully we will get rid of that detained condition so there he is he's also got the ancient sword his winchester rifle he's pretty tooled up we just need to make him so he's not detained anymore so we'll try and do that during the action phase is it for bob next up is lily chen as lily left the wilderness she found herself in a small city that had seen better days Poverty was rampant, and she shared what little she had with its inhabitants. She could not stay long, but she did what she could in the short amount of time there. She had to keep pressing on. So, here we are with Lily. What is Lily going to be doing in the action phase? Well, she's going to be moving on, just like the littlest hobo. Except our littlest hobo is actually an Arkham, and that's Ash Campeet. But back to Lily! So, let us consider the Lily. Lily is doing quite well on <laughs> the actual uh, talent front. She's got tons of talent. She's also still got a protective amulet and the re-roll of the Lucky Rabbit's foot. And she still has her two focus. Excellent. She's a bit down on her stamina, but three should be enough. We should be okay. And she has got four sanity. So, that is Lily. We will see where she is going in the action phase. Next up is the littlest hobo we mentioned. Yes, Ash Cam Pete. Pete was getting older and he never did take great care of himself being a vagabond. The recovery from fighting the gate creatures in Arkham took a long time. Longer than he wanted. He was laid up, duped by his side for what seemed an eternity. Pete had scraped enough money together to get a ship back to London. As he was boarding, he saw Bob up ahead with an elderly man. It looked like he and Jenkins were on the same path after all. Pete chose not to bother Bob and his companion, the elderly and studious looking man, but he figured that they would catch up in London. Pete was a bit of a loner and did not like crowds, so he kept to himself, especially as the news was calling him the crazy hobo and calling Duke a devil dog. It was best to lay low. As they docked in Southampton, Pete followed Bob, looking for a good time to approach him. Just as he did, police surrounded Bob. There was a scuffle and the cops took him away. Bob was yelling about the embassy. The old fellow with Bob assured him that he would try and get him out. So much for allies. Pete, trying to help, would only make it worse. He found a great place to strum his guitar for some money and found a boat to take him north. The cold lands still call to him. So here we are with Pete. And he's got loads of like train tickets and ship tickets. He's got focus. He's got two clues. He's blessed. He's got the dog. And the satchel of the void, the fetch stick, the practice, medical journal, King James Bible. For a hobo, he's packing a lot of stuff into that little handkerchief on the end of his fetch stick. So What's he going to do? Well, as mentioned, he's going to try and head up to get that clue in the Arctic. So we'll see that during the action phase. OK, that's it for Pete. Next up is Vincent. After a few days rest, Vincent felt much better. The headaches had finally stopped, so he thought it was time to move on. He decided to look up an old friend who now lived in Cape Town. He hoped he would be able to shed some more light on the sword of the cave. I'm sorry, Vince, but I've never seen these markings. I do know of someone who may, but he's somewhat of a recluse these days, so may not entertain you. I will try my best, though. It was good news. Vincent's friend had come through and managed to arrange a meeting with his contact. As Vincent approached the door to a large mansion, it opened and a young man showed him in. After some time being questioned in what Vincent felt was like some sort of job interview, he was taken to meet a frail old man lying on a bed. When the old man saw the sword, his eyes widened and he became very excited. Vincent told him all he could of what had happened. I have seen these markings only once before and many years ago. I was on an expedition in the Antarctic. 
They were in a cave very much like the one you mention, but I'm afraid that is all I can tell you. Vincent thanked the old man and left the room. The younger man followed. I don't know what you spoke with my father about, but I have not seen his spirits this high in a long time. Please, take this. The man handed Vincent an old journal. It's his life work, but he never managed to complete it. Please see what you can do to help. So here we are with Vincent. Again, he's doing really well. That's another thing meant to mention. When he rested, he should have got an extra health. So he is up to six health. Should have mentioned that earlier, but I'll mention it now. So he's up to full health, full sanity. He's still got a focus token. That's fine. And of course, he's picked up that courier run. If you can get to space 14 over on the board there, then he will fulfill that unique asset task. He's still got the sword, he's still got Skullduggery and Composed. And during the action phase, well, I've already mentioned, he's going to try and make his way to Antarctica. Right, so that is it for what happened previously on Cities in Ruin. Next up, it's the action phase. <laughs> And here we are at the action phase with Bob. There is only one thing he can do with his first action because he is detained by the forces of darkness. Look, it's a worm with tentacles coming out of it. Oh my God. So restriction, you cannot move or perform actions other than the action on this card. Instead of resolving an encounter, flip this card. So we do not want an encounter this turn. <laughs> so we've got a local action, Test Influence. If you pass, discard the card. So we'll put that there. Now, he had to impair his influence. So he's only got three, but he does get plus one from the personal assistant. So that is four dice. So one, two, three, four. And the personal assistant does give him a re-roll on influence test. Come on, Bob. A five. So he didn't even need the reroll. Awesome. We get rid of the detained condition. What a pity. So now he is freed up for his second action because he got rid of that on his first action. What he's going to do is he is going to get a ship ticket. London does have sea lanes, so he's going to get a ship ticket. That should help him go to Rome and then to the pyramids next turn. Great stuff. Put that onto his player tray and that is it for bob and the action phase next up is lily chen and here we are with lily chen she's on space one for her first action she's going to travel and she is going to go to san francisco once she's in san francisco for her second action she is going to prepare for travel so she is going to get herself a ship ticket. So that is it for Lily Chen and for her actions. Next up, it's Ash Cam Pete. And here we are with Ash Cam Pete. First action he's going to do is a rest action. And that's going to net him two health and two sanity. Now, he's only getting two sanity this time because it'll take him up to five sanity. That's his maximum. And the two health he's getting will take him up to five health as well. So we'll put those onto his player tray. For his next action, he is going to travel. And he's going to travel to London. But he's not going to stay in London because he's got a ship ticket. So he's going to spend his ship ticket and he's going to move up here to space 13. At last, we got there. <laughs> so Ash Campy is now in the Arctic and hopefully he'll be able to pick up that clue during the encounter phase. That is it for Ash Campy and his action phase. Next up is Vincent Lee. And here we are with Vincent, who is on space 15. The first thing he's going to do is prepare for travel because he'll need a ship ticket next turn. So he'll pick that up now while he's on a city space. For his next action, he will actually travel, but he's not going to spend that ship ticket. He is just going to go to space 18 here where there is another clue. And like Ash can, hopefully he will pick that up during the encounter phase. Speaking of which, that's up next.
and here we are with Bob in the encounter phase. Okay, so he's going to be having a generic London encounter. Let's try and get some clues on the board. So we'll probably need that and we will definitely need <laughs> the correct location deck, which isn't the America's deck. It's the orange. <laughs> it's the orange Europe deck. Oh, and now I can't shuffle. Let's try again. Mind you, I never could shuffle. Well, here we go. Right, that'll have to do. We'll do a cut. There we are. London. The famed medium, Morig Morris, allows you to speak with spirits. Test influence. Well, that's not too bad. We still get we get four dice again. And remember, we've still got the re-roll from the personal assistant. Come on. A six. Didn't need the re-roll again. That's awesome. Bob's a beast. If you pass, the voices have need of your help. Gain one task, unique asset, and spawn one clue. At least we spawned a clue. There's the fail if you want to read it. I'm not interested. So we'll spawn the clue first. Oh no, the task might be a courier run, mightn't it? So we better do it in order. Task, unique asset. So here we go. Uh, huge deck that I've got a shuffle and I've dropped something. But uh, Anthony, who's a viewer, had a great idea for these. But uh, I won't do it on camera, but um, if I'm playing off camera, I will. His idea is to split these decks actually into three. And then uh, you shuffle them first, then split them into three. And then just take your first deck first time. Then move on to the second deck, then move on to the third deck. Yeah, if you ever need to find anything, you look through the decks as normal, pull it out and then split it into three decks again. Just means that you are not sort of shuffling a million cards like I am. The only reason I'm not doing that on camera is because I'll just get a load of people in the comments saying, you're not shuffling them all. Okay, anyway, there we go. We've got to do a cut. And let's pull off the bottom till we get a task unique asset. For the greater good is a task. So here we go. The end of the mythos phase, you may spend clues equal to the investigators. Four clues to sacrifice yourself for the good of all mankind. Flip this guy. We've had this before. Um, I haven't used it, but somebody did have it. I can't remember who. But um, yes, if things are really grim right at the end, Bob may actually use it. But other than that, <laughs> I don't think so. But this might be a really good card, you know, if things are getting really, really bad. So, uh, yeah, so for the greater good, I wouldn't have had Bob down as the sort of person who would do that, but, uh, well, you never know. Right, put that deck back, and now we will spawn a clue. And the clue we spawn is, uh, what's this one? It is London. Awesome. <laughs> Remember the last clue that we had on London, we were allowed to place it anywhere, but that is really good. That might be good for Ashcan Pete when he comes back, because Bob has got to get down here and shut this Pyramids Gate. So at least it'll give Ashcan Pete something to do next turn. So that's the good draw. Excellent. Well done, Bob. That is it for his encounter phase. Next up is Lily Chen. And here we are with Lily Chen. Right, she's got a gate to shut, but before she shuts the gate, she's got a monster to kill. So, let's have a gander. First of all, we've got the horror check, so it's a normal will test, and we've got to get two successes. But, we should do that. Well, with any luck, we should do that. So, let's have a quick looky-see. She's got the protective amulet, which gives a plus one, as well as having five will to start with, so that is six dice. So that should be more than enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's do it. And she gets four successes. Easy, easy. Right, and then we've got the strength test, which is minus one. There's a load of blurb down here, but that's just about um, if you want to use the night garden to carry you somewhere, we don't want that. So what we'll do is just concentrate on the cob mat, which is minus one. Now, she does have martial prowess. So let's have a look at that. So we're going to get plus three during that encounter. So 
flip the card before we resolve the test. We can spend a health to gain plus five, but we don't want that because that would send us down to two health and then we could get a reckoning. So we won't bother. Does mean we're going to take a bit of a chance down here because we've still got to do our test result and we'll need three. We need three plus. But, uh, you know, she's got loads. You know, even if we end up discarding the card, I mean, we'll keep all these successes for a kickoff. So that's pretty good. Minus one, so we get, she's got four strength, plus three, seven dice, so that'll be six dice, minus the one. And we need two successes. Three, and we can keep the card. Come on. Oh, oh, we've got five. <laughs> five successes. Let's just check. Yes, your combination of strength and focus are unparalleled. No additional effects, so we keep that. So that's brilliant. So, and goodbye, Mr. Nightgaunt. Bye bye, Mr. Nightgaunt. There you go. And that means we can now get on with this gate. We will get rid of that loser die and keep all those nice, nice successes. Bloody hell, we got four sixes. Right, so let's see what we're going to get here. So we'll give it a quick shuffle. And then we'll do a cut. And we will flick it over. And we're going to the past. Dun, dun, dun. You find yourself in Providence, Rhode Island over 60 years ago. I think the police have surrounded what looks like a church. I think we've had this one before. Resolve the pass effect to help the police or resolve the fail effect to protect the church. Well, to be honest, I think, I think Lily, she would protect the church, wouldn't she? I don't think she'd help the police. She's mystical. She's lived with monks. So she'd protect the church. So I hope you're all right with that, Stosha. We're going to protect the church. So that's the fail effect. So we'll go past the pass effect. You fight to drive away the police. Fight. Brilliant. So it's strength minus one. But we're not going to use martial prowess. <laughs> I think we'll just use three of these successes. Because otherwise we could lose martial prowess, couldn't we? We've still got the lucky rabbit's foot. So we've still got a roll. We've still got a re-roll. Okay, so we'll just use three. We'll use three of these sixes. Oh, damn it. <laughs> damn it. So we've got a re-roll. Come on. A five. Oh, just. <laughs> oh, it was a fail condition, wasn't it? If you pass, you gain the gratitude of the Church of Starry Wisdom. Gain the Enoch Bowen unique asset. Yes, we have done this before. I remember him. I forget which investigator it was, but um, I remember getting him. Right, we'll dig him out. I'll get rid of that. Discard that. Let's get Enoch. Enoch. And... Do, do, do. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at this. He's right on top. <laughs> oh, so, oh, I'll have to look through all this lot. But no, he was right on top. He must have been right on top after um, we dug out that asset before. So there's Enoch. Saved me a job. And put that back. Let's have a read. Enoch Bowen. Unique, unique asset. Oh, that's the back. We want this one. Enoch Bowen, unique asset. Ally character. When you gain this card from the deck, close one gate of your choice on any space. Awesome! Um, b -b -b We're not going to close San Francisco. That's a green comet. So it's the pyramids. Oh, it's got to be Antarctica. Antarctica's a real pig to get to. So, yes. Antarctica. It's going. Away you go, son. So we can leave that ghast down in Antarctica. Who cares? That is a gate we've got rid of. Not only that, blue constellation gate. That's why we're keeping the green comet. That's not coming up for a while. And that means we've only got one blue constellation gate and that's the pyramids. So we're not even gonna hit. Move that out of the way. 
we're not even going to hit that Eldritch Tusk. Oh, you can't see it. Hang on. That Eldritch Token, not even going to hit it. Awesome. So we might not even get a disaster this turn. That is brilliant. Put that there on top of Arkham. Um, oh, Vincent was making his way there, but there was a, there's a clue down there. That's all he wants anyway. He can always double back the way he came. So brilliant. Do not need to go to Antarctica. In fact, he could go to Shanghai. He could go to Shanghai. Yeah, and um, Lily can stay and get rid of San Francisco next turn. Woo! But what a bloody hell, we're having an amazing turn again. We're doing it again. Fab you worse. Right, oh, is there anything else to do? No. Normally, I'd have been jumping up and down there because we didn't shut the gate, but we've got dead jammy and um, we've managed to shut a gate that we wanted to shut, which was a blue constellation gate. So, yes! Awesome! Okay, that is it for Lily. Another brilliant turn from Lily. Next up is... Da -da, who's next up? It is... Ash Cam Pete. And here we are with Ash Cam Pete. Can he follow Lily Chen? We need this clue. Come on, Pete. And he's blessed, remember? So he'll probably need that. And he will definitely need... The research deck. So... That and... A quick cut and let's flick it over what's he on a sea space you spot shifting earth on a distant shoreline as if something is burrowing beneath the ground dun 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 gain this clue <laughs> Woo! that goes straight onto the mystery top banana so we should solve that this mythos phase hopefully let's get back to here Enraptured by the spectacle, you are barely aware of your surroundings. Test observation minus one. What's his observation? His observation is... Part three, but he is practised, so he will roll another die. I don't think anything else helps him, apart from the fact he is blessed. So his observation is three, minus one is two. Practice gives him another die, which is three, so it's three blessed dice. He needs a four or better. Come on. A five and a six. Awesome. He'd have passed even with normal dice. If you fail, we didn't fail, so we got the clue we needed. Top banana. Get rid of that. And woo! We are on a roll. Let's get rid of that. And next up, let's see if Vincent Lee can pick up his clue. And here we are with Vincent. So, exactly the same. He needs the research deck. Let's give it a quick shuffle and a quick cut. And let's see what we get. He is on a sea space as well. An elderly monk sitting cross-legged on a rock in the middle of the ocean. Nice one. Riddles you to test your worth. Observation minus one. What's his observation? His observation is three. Has he got anything that will help him? He's got composed. I don't think we've used it yet. So as long as we don't re-roll ones, we can re-roll all our dice. So was it... Observation was three, wasn't it? So we've got two dice to roll. Don't roll a one. If, if we're going to fail, do not roll a one. And he's also got a focus token. Buddy hell, two successes. <laughs> yes. Brilliant stuff. If you pass, the priest gifts you with a vial of consecrated seawater. Gain the Tikaun Elixir at Artifact. So we don't get the clue after all. To count elixir artifacts. Bloody hell, what the what bloody hell's that? Right, artifact deck. Oh, let's have a look through. Right. Oh, here it is. Oh, here's the elderly monk. 
that was set on the rock. Looks like him out of the Karate Kid. To count Elixir. Item, Elixir, funnily enough. Test Will, if you pass, you may spend one sanity to gain one boon condition. Hmm, not too bad. May come in useful towards the end of the game. Okay, so we got an artifact. Now, I'd be hopping up and down, absolutely raging, if we hadn't already got the clue to put onto the mystery, but we have. So, that is a nice find. So, we give that to Vincent. Well done, Vincent. We discard that and put the deck back. And that is it for the encounter phase. What a brilliant encounter phase. Again, we're having a major turn like we had on turn three. Everybody hates me because we're doing so well and I'm just buzzing off it. So hopefully we won't get a really crappy mythos phase. Speaking of which, yes, next up, it's a laugh and chuckle phase. And here we are at the laugh and chuckle phase. I'll try and zoom through this because I want to watch the football. So, <laughs> right. So, laugh and chuckle phase. So, we need the Mythos deck of the Doom. Also, if you hear the doorbell in the background, it's trick-or-treaters and stuff, and people have started laying off fireworks for bonfire night early. So, I apologise for any of that. It's now gone pitch black outside and it's turning into, it's like we're under shell fire. Right, anyway, let's flick this over. Ooh, a green card. So we've got that movement, but I think we've got away with it. We go to a blue constellation, but it doesn't matter because we've only got one blue constellation gate. Hurrah! We move back to 15. We still haven't got a disaster, folks. So that is cool. But virtually every card from now on does have omen movement. So um, we've got to, we'll have to really watch the gates from now on. We've got a reprieve. Let's make the most of it. Uh, for the gates that are open, so the pyramids and San Francisco, we're going to get a monster surge. So Bob and Lily are going to have some monsters to deal with, unfortunately. So let's have a look how many monsters do we get. We get two monsters on each gate. Now, I think what we've got to do, because we're on a blue constellation, we will fill up the pyramid gate first, then we will fill up San Francisco. As long as you make it clear which one you're going to fill up first, or what order you're going to do it in first, I don't think it really matters. They're going to go two on here and then two on to San Francisco. So the first one on the pyramids, and oh, we don't want cultists. We do not want cultists. If we're picking four monsters out, we'll probably get one. We get a rat thing. We hate rat things. So, oh, minus two observation, minus one strength. At least there's only one toughness. At least we don't lose any sanity, but I think we lose an item. If you fail the observation test, discard one item possession. So, ugh. We've got a rat thing at the pyramids. With the rat thing at the pyramids is oh, what's this? A moon beast. These are bad. Oh, four toughness. Minus one for the horror check, minus one for the combat check. Oh, two, three, four toughness. You may discard one item possession instead of resolving the strength test. Alright. Oh, so does that kill it, or would you have to get rid of four items? Let me know, because we're not fighting it yet, are we? So um, let me know if it's get rid of four items, because it, it could always raid the um, asset reserve, couldn't he? And then just, uh, <laughs> just get rid of loads. So perhaps we can get away with that. Let us know on that one. So that's those two. I'll put them on stands in a minute. The two that are going up to San Francisco. And as I say, I'll put them on uh, stands later. I'm in a hurry because the football's on. So that is the monster surge. And then we get two clues. Remember, in the mythos phase, at the end of the mythos phase, we get rid of that mystery as well. So if it's another mystery with clues, this will help. So as our first clue, that is space 11. That's here. And 
South Atlantic, and our second clue is Space 8, the Bermuda Triangle. Coolness. Right, so now we can read the card. Oh, tentacles. Pulling the curtain back slightly, you see the same suspicious man watching your hotel. You're going to have to sneak out the back exit and try and lose him again. Strange sightings, which is ongoing. Investigators cannot perform arrest action. Oh, no, not against shoot Mel. <laughs> and we're going to get a reckoning next turn. Have we got enough? off? Oh, Ashcan's all right. Um... Oh, and we've got all these monsters. Ashcan's all right. Um, Dinny's all right. Oh, Bob's probably all right. Remember, we can't rest before we fight these monsters. We couldn't anyway. Lily couldn't rest anyway because she's on the same space. Um, so it doesn't really affect Lil Lily too much, this. But, um, oh... Yeah, she's only got three health. She has got four. Oh, that's bad. Because if we get a reckoning right after this card... Okay, we get rid of this card, but if we lose any... Oh, we might not be able to close these gates. We might not be able to close these gates. Because can we risk fighting these monsters if we cannot rest before taking them on? Lily... They're not too bad, actually. She could probably kill them, I think. That's one for Stosha to have a think about. But I think that those are not hard. What is her influence? So, two re-rolls, Firebug and Zombies, you'd probably kill them. Probably kill them. Um, Bob, he's, I don't think he's got, he's got no chance against the Moonbeast. Let me know about the Moonbeast. If he only has to get rid of one item, which I doubt, <laughs> he's probably got to get rid of four. But... Um, he might be able to kill them. The rat thing isn't a big deal. Oh, that we've got a big, big decision to make on this. Do we take these monsters on? Uh, because if we get a reckoning next, if we get another green card, I think we've got another green card in here. So um, yeah, we've got a green and a yellow, have we? Oh, I can't even remember. I can't remember now, but. Um, Oh, yes. I think we've got... There's another green and there's a yellow. If we get another green, we can't rest again. So that doesn't help. So, oh, yes. We're going to have to sort it next turn. I think Lily can do it. Those monsters aren't particularly hard. She's got a couple of re-rolls. So that's fine. However, the moon beast and the rat thing are a different matter. So, oh, that's bad. And if we get a reckoning next turn... Yeah, we've definitely got to do it because of that firebug. Was it the firebug? This needs killing. Because otherwise, Doom, Doom will advance by, could advance by one. And we need to stop that. So, I think she can do it. You can do it, Stosia. Gain a focus and just kill him. Right. Yeah. Oh, that is... See why it's got bloody tentacles on it. So that stays in play. At least it's only till we get another reckoning. And then uh, I think we will all be very, very quickly resting the turn after we get rid of this. Right, we'll put it up there in our special spot. I can get it to stand up properly. Right, there we go. Strange sightings. Oh, that's a bit of a beast. But nobody's died. We're still here. We're still fighting. I've got to put those on stands. Oh, what a really good turn. That's a bit of a bummer, but it's not a game breaker. Um, as long as we don't get a horrendous, horrendous reckoning next turn. Thinks, I think Lily can kill those monsters. We'll look into it. Bob might be able to take these guys on again. I'll have a think about that. Um, we really could do with with closing San Francisco as well. It's not so bad on the pyramids now. We've got another grace, you know, because of the um, omen trap movement. That could possibly wait the pyramids. 
So, ugh, damn, 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 damn. What am I saying that for? We've had a brilliant turn. Forget that. That's just a, that's a minor bummer. We did fabulous. We got rid of Antarctica. The turn was worth it for that, getting rid of that gate. That was just brilliant. We didn't get a disaster. And we just rolled like a, Lily rolled like a boss. And we, yo, yeah, nearly forgot. I was going to say, we got the final clue via Ashcan. So, bringer of ruin. So, a quick look. The end of the mythos phase, there are clues on this card equal to the number of investigators solve this mystery. We've solved our first mystery. Awesome. Get rid of that. Discard those clues. And we need another mystery. Where it stops, nobody knows. And let's do a cut. And what do we get? The Burrowers Beneath. Come on, focus. Beneath the Earth's crust, the eldest of Shudmel's children burrows beneath continents, creating tremors of increasingly worrisome magnitude and frequency. Uh-oh, this sounds like an epic monster to me. When this card enters play, spawn a, num a number of ancient epic Chthonian monsters equal to half the investigators. Two on a random city or wilderness space. At the end of the Mythos phase, if all of these Chthonian Cathon epic monsters have been defeated, solve this mystery. And we can't rest! <laughs> oh, no! No! Ah, oh, Chthonians! Oh, I hate these guys. I mean, we're pretty tooled up, but oh, with Hugh Bell being such a pig on a reckoning, these are beasts, aren't they? We didn't, um, I think Lily got um, ambushed by one, didn't she? Let me dig them out. There's the one we had before. There must be more than one. Hang on. Won't be a second. I'll get, uh, I'll get another one. Right, I'm back. Put those on stands. So here we go, we've got two of these guys, I think you get about four. So they're all the same, I think. Yeah. Oh, each investigator on this space during a reckoning or an adjacent space loses one health, one sanity. Oh, five. Got to kill them both. Oh. See, don't matter how lucky you are against Shudmel. Man, what a... Oh, it's a monster of epic proportions. Pardon the pun. So, what have we got here? So, it's minus one on a will check. So, oh, got to get at least two successes. Minus two on the strength check. There's three. In fact, did we get one of these? It wasn't this bad, was it? Or was it? Yeah, because it had five toughness, didn't it? They both got five toughness. Oh, God. Um, right, where are they going to go? Let's pick out some clues. The first one is going on... Space nine. Oh yeah, dead easy to get to. Greenland. <laughs> oh. So anybody in Arkham, which is an adjacent space, if it if there's a reckoning, you get you lose a health and a sanity. Where's the next one going? The next one is going to. The heart of Africa, where that other Chthonian is. I suppose that makes sense. So, oh, oh, I hate these guys. I hate these guys. And these are just going to be so, so difficult to kill. They're epics. It means, like, you can't, you know, go to Tokyo to get rid of them. The only way you can kill epics is by actually reducing their health to zero. You can't get them removed off the board or any of that foolishness. So, oh, oh I'll put the Chthonian in front of the ancient one because you've got to fight. Whoever goes down there will have to fight the normal Chthonian first. The burrow is beneath. Well, I am not impressed with that. We've got to kill two ancient Chthonians. Oh. Well, that just goes to show, doesn't it? No matter what a great turn you think you've had, it can come back and it can bite you on the bum, big style. And it's done that. 
we can't rest we got two epic horrors on the board that are absolute nightmares and the two gates you know that we want a shot have now got two monsters on them each thank god we got rid of antarctica imagine if we'd had a load of horrible monsters down there with the ghast so that would have been really bad but uh, we've got shanghai coming up by the by the look of it very soon um if we don't get a reckoning next turn we still can't rest oh i don't know what we're going to do we are going to have to do some major major thinking next turn those two ancient Chthonians have really kicked us in the nuts. Right, what time is it? Right, it's 25 to 8 and the match starts in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to wrap it up here <laughs> and quickly try and um, start uploading this while I'm watching the football. So if there's any errors in the editing, you know what it is. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the views. Thanks for all the subscriptions and all the views. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for all the dislikes. And thank you very much for all the help and support. As ever, if you've noticed any errors, please let me know. There may well be um, some errors. Once you put in loads of like monsters on the board and stuff, I may have made a balls up somewhere. So, and plus the fact I was getting giddy again because we were doing really well again, so I may have missed something there. Okay, right, so please let me know and I'll try and fix it for next go. Um, oh yes, it's been across the board game links to watch one of the videos there, thank you very much. And if you've been to BGG to uh, thumb up the videos or make a comment over there, again, thank you so much. Right, so that is it for turn five is it oh i can't remember it's turn five i think yes that is it for turn five i hope you join me for turn six but until then this is me cat weasel signing off toodaloo <laughs>